the Quran is full of long words, really, really, really tons of them. Uh, and, and Arthur Jeffrey is, is somewhat outdated by now, but, but I th think still is a pretty good source for these kinds of things. Um, you know, very basic stuff, uh, you know, things related to um, uh, administration and these kinds of things very often are either Latin long words or Greek long words or Latin through Greek, uh, which is obviously just related to contact with the Roman Empire and these kinds of things. Um, but then there's a huge, huge amount of um, religious vocabulary. A religious vocabulary that are clearly long words and you know very central words masjid uh mosque right or malakut kingdom specifically kingdom of heaven these are aramaic long words and are very clearly aramaic long words um which tells us something like it tells us something about the audience of the quran um you know it doesn't tell us something about whether you know uh the prophet or whoever um, was writing the text or composing the text was somehow stealing from 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 a, a Aramaic tradition. The point is, it tells us something about about the kinds of contact that was around for the audience. Because obviously, if the Quran was using a word like like uh, Quran, we'll get into that one in a second. Let's say Malakut for for the kingdom of heaven. Um, if it was using that word, clearly the audience would have understood it. Well, why did the, the audience understand this Aramaic word? Apparently because Aramaic was being used and was specifically being used for religious uh, topics. So it tells us something about what kinds of religion was indeed in contact with the Quranic audience at the time when the Quran you know, came down or was composed. Um, what were they doing with it? Did it make sense to them? Yes, it must have made sense to them because it was very successful. Um, so these words were around. So we learned something about like the historical context of the religion at the time. Clearly, there was a lot of monotheistic, specifically um, religious vocabulary already in place for the audience to understand what the Quran was talking about. And you know that's quite interesting and important. Um, uh, so that's really essential. Uh, the, the, the one point. So let, let's talk about the, the Quran thing. So that's. It's true, like the word, the way it's used, it seems to have the kind of a similar meaning to Qariyana uh, in, in Syriac. But what's interesting about it, is it's not perfect. Like if, if the Quran would have wanted to borrow that word, it would have borrowed as Qiryan, which it doesn't. It's called Quran. And so there is a kind of, it's not what we would call a long word directly, but it's a calc. So you take a formation with the specific meaning and you take your own kind of word or make your own formation of that word as kind of similar to that, but with a native roots and kind of develop it from there. But, you know, anything like kitab is, a, is an Aramaic long word. Actually, qara'a to, to re, read, to recite is an Aramaic long word. Um, uh, salat, you know, uh, uh, prayer is, is an Aramaic long word. Uh, so there's tons of them. Um, what's yeah. kind of interesting about these, these, these Aramaic long words is they don't quite look like Syriac Aramaic, though. Um, so, and this is this is kind of a technical thing. But if we look at, for example, the word for for uh, kingdom um, in Syriac, that would be malchotho. Uh, 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 so it has a khanatha, and it doesn't have the uh, uh, the fatha in between the lam and kha. And in the Quran, it's malakut. And it could have borrowed as Malchuth, but it doesn't. Why doesn't it borrow it as Malchuth? Well, because it's not borrowing it from Syriac. Um, it's probably borrowing it from uh, classical Ethiopic, which also has this word, Malakot. Um, But where did classical Ethiopic come, uh, get it from? Because classical Ethiopic could have still have borrowed it as Malchuth, but it doesn't. Um, so there's this very kind of strange, very archaic looking Aramaic, which is influencing both Quranic Arabic and uh, Ethiopic, and probably also ancient South Arabian, um, which is bringing in all this kind of religious vocabulary. Uh, Rahman, right, the name for, for well, one of the names for deity, but also an important name for the deity in South Arabia. Once again, Aramaic loanword. Where are all these words coming from? It's clearly coming in with this big baggage of, of like religious vocabulary. And the kind of Aramaic that spread that was somehow a very archaic variety of Aramaic. Not quite Syriac, but something else. So where did that come from? Right. We don't really know at the moment. It's very exciting. 